Jackie, before we get to Qatar, we'll, we'll keep that conversation on The Voice going because uh, according to Resolve, all states, on the mainland anyway, leaning no, except for Tasmania, your state. Is that really true in your view? What are you picking up? Oh, look, I'm not, I'm not really hearing anything about the voice down there. It's all about the cost of living. So I'm, I'm just, I'm not 100% sure. Obviously, I'll be home uh, after this, uh, after next week and I'll be around for a couple of weeks. I'll be able to give you more of an indication of what it looks like then. I'm not sure whether it will continue to hold in Tasmania. It may, it may not. Uh, but seriously, I couldn't even tell you where they're sitting because when I was down there, you know, Pete, a week and a half ago, it was all about the cost of living. That's where yeah. we're at. So, so is that... Uh, sorry, I will Jackie. float around. And yeah. I, sorry, it, I will it, float around for a couple of weeks. I've told Tasmanians that and hear what they've got to say. So is that precisely the problem here in your view, is that folks' attention is just elsewhere? Well, people are doing it really tough out there at the moment and I can tell you they're, they're certainly not coming up to me talking about the voice. Um, that's where we're at also, and I've already said this in the past... I just think Labor's done a really lousy job of selling this, mm. to be brutally honest with you. Uh, and then you've got the opposition opposition coming at them at 100 to 1. So I just I think Labor has failed miserably. Once again, I hope they have a plan B ready, just in case. What are you going to do? And what have you done for the last 18 months while this mm. has been going on The Voice what actually have you been in those communities and actually you're done? That's what I want to know because, seriously, if you've put everything on hold and done very little in those communities, then we really do have a problem. Yeah, and, and I mean, it, when it comes to the blame game, you know, the, the, the government, the federal government won't be able to blame the coalition because on the mainland it's wall-to-wall -wall Labor anyway. So are they just, just, just have misread the mood of the public on this. I can assure you if it goes down, I would shut up with both sides and stop the blame game and come out with a plan B because the hurt that is going to be out there in, in those Indigenous communities and others, mm. if this doesn't get up, will be extremely hurtful, Pete. Uh, I wouldn't be coming out here throwing hammer and tongs about it if it goes down. That is not fair. We'll need to get on with it. We'll need to work out what we're going to do in those Indigenous communities as soon as possible to get them moving and make them better places. What do you make of Peter Dutton's second push? Uh, yeah, I just think, you know, once again, uh, this is where the Labor Party went, part, went uh, wrong, Pete, is they didn't come up with, out with any detail. So you're having a second second push. You're talking about that now, but you've got no detail. Seriously, it's laughable. Mm, we, once you... again, I'm more worried about this yeah. this going down, Pete, and people, a lot of people out there being extremely hurt. OK, but would you support, where, you know, where Peter Dutton is at, you know, with his, with his push for a second referendum, basically, if he wins office? Well, I don't, I don't, I don't support anything right now. I'm too worried about if this goes down the hurt that it's going to, um, mm. that is going to happen out there in those communities, and across Australia. That's what I'm more worried about right now. But if you come out once, when you're going at the Labor Party because it doesn't have any detail, and then you come out with something like that's a brain fart and say, hey, I'm going to have a second <laughs> referendum. You've got no detail yourself. I mean, seriously, Pete, seriously. On to Qatar. We've heard from the government, we've heard the opposition. What's your view on, on the government's approach to these extra flights? Oh, I don't... It's just not looking very good, is it? It'll be very interesting to see what comes out of um, the inquiry, but quite frankly, I think that... Um, I don't think that they did their homework. I, I'm uh, worried that uh, the Minister, Catherine King there, um, obviously did not do her homework, did not go out there and speak to everybody... Um, and kept it very, very in-house. And I guess how much leans towards the trouble with the women on that Qatar flight, how she made her decision, because what else was it actually really based on? And that is a real worry when you should be worrying about um, what is going on, what is best for the nation. And so if she's done that, once again, she's in charge of billions of dollars and she's not doing her consulting on something like this, mm. I have to ask, how's the infrastructure consulting going? Seriously. So, you know, I think there's a problem here. There is a lot of gaps, gaps out there that we need filled, and I think the um, Senate inquiry will certainly bring all this out. But it is a problem, and it may just end up that the PM may need to come out and reverse his decision. But apart yeah. from what Catherine King's saying and Qantas, mate, I don't hear anybody that's, that agrees with it. That's, what, that's, that's my due diligence. <laughs> I did early last week. The... 
I mean, yeah, they've pointed to a number of issues and notably human rights is one of them, but they remain very coy when it comes to that question on Qantas. So do you think that's where the truth lies? What is in the national interest? That's all I'm interested in. And what did you base your decision on? And if you were just talking to Qantas and you based it on, uh, you based it on the women, then you have to really ask, was that in the national interest and did you do your homework? OK, Jackie Lambie, good to see you as always. We'll talk to you soon.